We are now turning our attention to look at the general theme of programming from this video onwards and we're looking at developing code in this video and testing code, that's the main focus of the specification points. There's a few points uh, here that I can't really cover like writing programs and being able to fix errors um, and the final point is about working safely, respectfully, responsibly and securely. Obviously important, I'm not saying it's not important, for example you have to put in points like this to get accredited but it's not something I feel I'm really qualified to teach in this video so you're more than welcome to try and revise it if you feel you want to. Um, I'm sure there's lots of stuff on the internet but I'm not going to teach it in this video. What we are going to be begin with is readability. So readability is how easily program code can be understood. So having readable code is first of all very helpful for a programmer. I know some people who have handwriting so bad they can't even read it themselves and if code is not at a suitable level of readability that can kind of happen because you lose track of what you're doing. If you write code that's very messy and you've got stupid names for your variables, functions, it's going to make it difficult for yourself but also massively for people looking at your code. Um, it's very difficult to fix other people's code anyway but it doesn't help when their code isn't readable at all and they haven't used these techniques for example to say you need to know about. So the first one is using comments and comments are effectively annotations that exist alongside your active code. So they don't have any bearing on the actual program, they're only there for viewing in the source code, so in the text editor, in the IDE which is what we're going to look at later, but um, they should be there to explain what you intend to do. So when you're working on a team project it can be very helpful to clarify what you're doing. And the only thing I would say to add to that is if your comments are getting too complex, like if you're really struggling to explain what you're doing, that suggests that you could rewrite your code. Because I always think comments are quite good for being held accountable. Because if you are unable to convey what your code is doing or what you plan to do, there's probably a better way you could write your code. So that's when comments can be quite useful. I'm sure if teachers have mentioned or made you write loads of comments. Uh, the next one, for example, I'll just mention is using descriptive variable names. And a variable, which is something we haven't covered yet, I'm sure in the next few videos we're going to cover it in a lot more detail. But quickly, in case you're learning this for the first time, a variable is just a store of information and it has a name. So it has an associated name called the identifier. And you can effectively name it, name variables anything you want. There's a few exceptions, but you can name it any you can name it something random or you can name it something that's descriptive to what the variable it is. So for example score would just represent maybe an integer keeping track of how well the user is doing. And it does make it a lot easier to know what's happening if you have descriptive variable names. If you're trying to fix a section of code and the names are descriptive, not just variables like functions, procedures, it makes it a lot easier. Um, and it's also important to keep variables consistent. Um, but that's a sort of side note. And the final sort of technique is indentation. And indent is just a gap put in by the programmer. And some languages are called freeform languages where the where the location of white space, so gaps, indent, isn't part of the syntax. Others, like uh, Python, the white space is part of the syntax, but you can still add gaps and make it look a lot more presentable. And it's like if you have a long block of text without any gaps in between, without any paragraphs, it's difficult to read and using indents can make the structure a lot clearer. So moving on to the testing part of this video. For the exam you need to know about three types of error. And an error is just an occurrence of an unexpected result and testing is to try and eradicate and find these errors. So the first type of error you need to know about is the logic error. So a logic error occurs when the program's execution appears to run as normal but not as you intended. So the error is in your logic, not the actual code. You've written the code okay but the way you've written it has meant that the result is different to what you expected. And execution is just for computer following the instructions and execution and running are used interchangeably. And these types of errors are the hardest to detect and fix because they occur as a result of a mistake somewhere. And you obviously don't know what the mistake is otherwise you wouldn't have, uh, you would have changed it when you could. So these are difficult to fix so there's a method later we'll look at which can help find these. The second type is maybe easier to understand and that's syntax error. So the syntax is just for structure and rules of a programming language like the grammar or the normal language. And so a syntax error is one way you actually break these rules. So whereas logic is an error with your logic, this is an error where your code hasn't been written to the specification of the programming language. So here in Python, in Python part of the syntax is when you initiate a loop, when you finish your condition you have to put a colon at the end. 
and I've forgotten to do this and I've gone into the next line and I've got an, a warning saying that I have a syntax error so I'm breaking the syntax by not including a colon at the end of a statement so now moving on to the final type of error and that's a runtime error and runtime errors only occur during or after the execution and they can occur for lots of very specific reasons such as hardware issues so running out of memory or trying to complete operations during the execution that it cannot handle like running an infinite loop so these are the least specific but they only occur during or after the execution and if we now look at slightly more to do with actual testing so a test plan is a word mentioned on the specification and perhaps this may seem very control assessment based but I just want to cover it to make sure in the exam you don't get caught out so a test plan is simply a document outlining the stages of the testing process so it will give details like the test data used and expected results and it's often expressed as a table and so you have a column with the actual code or maybe a screenshot or maybe a link uh, just a quick synopsis of the purpose and your test data, we'll look at test data in the next slide and an expected result and then when you actually finish the testing you can fill in other columns about the actual result and whether it's failed or passed the test and if it's failed you have to then perhaps add another column or explain how you fixed it um, the actual test data which you mentioned is usually put into three categories the obvious purpose of testing is to reveal errors so it's important to use the program in a way that simulates the use of the user so a user could potentially input valid you'd hope or invalid inputs and we tend to put test data into three categories the names often vary um, there's no kind of set name they vary but they mean the same thing so normal data is the valid data we're talking about these are the values you normally expect a user to enter so if your program takes an input from the user of their name you'd expect the input to be of a string of their name and then boundary data is values that are kind of on the edge of being considered normal so they could potentially be used but they're not going to be used that often so an example I thought of was perhaps something to do with a, a calendar or a date the 29th of February only gonna, it's only going to appear every four years but it could theoretically still be a date or someone's birthday but it wouldn't be handled that often but extra consideration would need to be used for cases like this and finally you test it with data that's clearly wrong so this is the invalid input and this is data that should not be able to work for the program the program is not designed to work with this data but it still should be designed so that it's robust enough to actually deal with this data as in you don't want the, the input to break it you still want the program to function so these are the three types of data we usually test data we usually classify as or usually input in the testing phase so I mentioned earlier about a method for finding logic errors. So trace tables are used to test for logic errors. And what they do, they record the values of variables at different points in the program, allowing you to see exactly where the logic error occurs. They're kind of long to do, admittedly, but there are tools, as we'll look at later, that can help build, log uh, as build trace tables. So this code here is meant to find the average of this list. And the average of this should be 8, because this adds to 40, and then divided by 5 is 8. But when you run this code, you get an average of six. So obviously something's wrong here. We've got a logic error. It's not, it's not something wrong with the code. The syntax is okay, but a logic error is occurring because we're getting a different result to what we wanted. So what I do, I draw a, well, in, in the computer, do a trace table. And what I do across the top, I've got the variables. So this is part of my list, um, representing the index indexes of this list, and the sum. Uh, variable here and for x variable used in the loop and the average variable too. So you can see here this bit is the bit where it's actually su summing the items in the list. And what we can see straight away is we can see where the logic error occurs because here we're adding 7 before we add 10 and 10 is not being added at all. So we're going to get a wrong total which is going to cause the whole pro program to be wrong. So the logic error is that we're doing zero indexing here so we're, we're assuming that we're starting from one when in fact we should be starting from zero because we're doing zero indexing which is why we're missing this seven and potentially if you didn't do this trace table you wouldn't be able to see where the logic error is so it can be really beneficial if a bit long so potentially you'd have to be asked to implement one in the exam as in fill in one for some program code and this is roughly the structure you'd use Okay, so to wrap up this video, we need to look at IDE. So IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, and they are applications that provide a selection of tools for programmers. So you could just code in a text editor, so Notepad, but really you want a bit more added functionality, and IDEs give you that. So a popular one is Eclipse, 
which is primarily for Java, but you can get add-ons for others, or let's say you can also, another IDE is idle for Python, which is kind of a default IDE used for Python. And we usually have debugging tools built in, and debugging is a process of finding and removing errors. And so you can actually have standalone programs that provide this function, or you could do it yourself to some extent, but these tools make it a lot easier to test your program and three of them you need to know about so the first one is watcher and this tool watches anything specified by the program are usually just variables or expressions and as with all of these to be honest the actual methods vary and they have different names roughly they're usually based around these names but in I'm pretty sure this is Visual Studio I think I might have got this off the internet I can't remember but this is I think Visual Studio Express and um, this is example of inspecting a variable's value so opening a quick watch window that's what it's called in this IDE and just looking at the value of this variable at this given point and this is relatively static and you can as another tool to make it slightly more dynamic you can actually open a watch window usually uh, where the variables can be constantly inspected as the program executes so you can see the changes in the values as the program executes kind of like a trace table except if the computer does it for you which is probably more helpful and you can also evaluate expressions so really what we're doing here we're inspecting the value of this expression at this point possibly testing it just to see whether the program is doing the right thing to the data so this is just summing three variables and dividing it by three and we get our value as two so I, I can't think of an example where that would be especially useful but you may want to just check your program's doing the right thing at a given point uh, the other tools are I think slightly more helpful which is useful but breakpoints are really they add a lot more. They add a lot more control to your testing process. And breakpoints basically allow you to stop the program with execution at specified points, and they can be inserted into the code in order to sort of section off your code just to test a specific part of it. So this is in Visual Studio Express because I know because I did it, um, and this is just me inserting a breakpoint into this line. And you can see we've got a little bit of a red symbol here. It's highlighted red just to tell us that's the IDE trying to help us by showing us different colours and like I say this gives a lot more control over the testing process and often this is used in conjunction with another tool called steps or something along those lines and stepping is a process of executing line by line so often you'll let's say pause with execution by using breakpoints and then you'll step line by line after this point so this tool will often be used when it's paused as I've said and then you can continue at your own pace and the actual commands vary again but for example, we mention single step and step through. Single step is the term I've heard, and actually, literally, where the next line of code is executed. Step through, I've never actually used a tool with that name, but I interpret that to mean when the program executes line by line until a specified point. So in Visual Studio Express, you can get it to execute to where the cursor is, and that's what I interpret the example meaning by step through. Perhaps that is used, I don't know, I've never heard that term before, but you can. So I guess it's relatively clear what that is. Um, so as a final point, I'm going to make, I wasn't going to answer this because it's kind of not really something I can go over, but I just thought maybe people would want to know. So there's a question about evaluating programs and what makes a good program. So one of the measures is correctness. So does the code meet the requirements? Is the solution accurate? I guess that's relatively important. Efficiency is quite important as well. You know, if the if example show you some code, can it be majorly streamlined? Can, are they using too many lines? But on a small snippet of code you'll be see, you'll be shown in the exam perhaps that's not a great uh, measure to use robustness is quite important so if you're shown some code in the exam if you entered something different if you entered some erroneous test data would it be able to handle it is there a, a loop that makes the user enter inputs until they get a valid input is it handled okay and understandability which is the, when we go back to the first bit of this video which is about readability comments indentation have they used that can they be used? And I imagine this is a point that if you're asked to evaluate a program, that will be the one that's most important because these three points are on the specification. And so really it comes down to this, and I saw this on Stack Overflow and I thought it was quite funny. I won't read it, but really the point is that it's very subjective, good code. And I think this is the most important point, understandability, especially at GCSE level. Um, it's going to take a while to look at any code, even though it's good, but readability can make a big difference. So anyway, that's it for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Next up, we're continuing on this theme by looking at programming constructs. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching.